Hello and welcome to Game 113, Introduction to Game Tools. My name is Matthew Marquit and I'm a full-time instructor at the University of Advancing Technology. Uh, and today, uh, as you can see here, we are going to learn uh, a little bit about Autodesk's 3DS Max 2014. This is actually the first video of a three-part uh, lesson. Uh, this first part is actually the basic introduction of the interface of 3 Studio Max. Um, and then the second video will be modeling. The third video will be uh, importing our model and turning that into a collectible object uh, into Unity. But like I said before, this video is dedicated to the introduction to the interface of 3 Studio Max. Now, if you guys are opening up your version of 3 Studio Max in a computer uh, at uh, the university, you do want to click down over here on the Windows button and actually type in 3DS, okay, and then load up either 3DS uh, Max or 3DS Max English. Either of them will work. What you don't want to do, obviously, is choose a language you don't understand or actually double click a Max file. Uh, because what it will do is it will load up the design version of Max. We want to stay away from the design version. We're actually going to use the normal version here. Uh, if you load up the design version, you'll know because it will have a light interface. This being a dark interface is a obvious cue that we are using the normal version of 3ds Max. Okay, but like I said, we're going to talk about the interface uh, of Max. By default, you do get a four viewport view. Okay, as we can see here, we do have a top wireframe view, a front wireframe, left wireframe, and of course, our perspective realistic view uh, down here in the corner. Okay, and as you select a different viewport, you will notice that it does highlight yellow. This lets us know that it is the active viewport, so whatever we're doing will be updating uh, and changing in that particular viewport. Now, I particularly like to use uh, one viewport view uh, as opposed to the four. This does help us, a four viewport uh, view does help when you are trying to perfectly line things up and so on. Uh, but in this case, we don't need that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna maximize my viewport by hitting the hotkey Alt W. Uh, as you can see, it makes the one viewport, whatever we have selected bigger. Obviously, if you hit Alt W again, it will go back. So you can just keep hitting that um, hotkey and then select different viewports or whatever, uh, and then make them the maximized viewport. But in this case, I'm going to choose perspective. I'm gonna hit Alt View uh, or Alt W again to change the view. Now, by default, it is set to perspective and realistic. I actually don't like realistic. Realistic uh, kind of creates shadows and it kind of makes them fuzzy as they draw back in. So I'm just gonna go to shaded uh, up here uh, just for a better view uh, in my personal opinion. Um, but uh, you don't have to do that. You can leave it on realistic. Okay, so what we're going to learn first is how we navigate in our viewport. Now, all you need to know is basically the middle mouse wheel and the alt button. Those are the only two buttons you'll use when you're using navigation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold down the middle mouse button, and that allows me to pan around, as you can see here, as I move my uh, mouse around. If I want to zoom in and out, I just have to use the middle mouse wheel, scrolling it up and down. Okay, and then the very last hotkey to remember as far as navigating is concerned is holding down Alt and holding down the middle mouse wheel at the same time, which will allow us to rotate around, uh, as you can see in our viewport. So those are the three hotkeys, the middle mouse by itself to pan, middle mouse scroll to zoom in and out, and Alt and middle mouse push down to basically look around. All right, so now that we know kind of how to move around in our viewport, we need to be able to create something uh, and kind of manipulate it. So over here on the right side of our viewport, okay, we do see the uh, set of tabs that Max has. Uh, the first tab is actually the creation tab or the create tab, as we can see here. It does allow us to create a whole plethora of objects. Okay, as we can see here, we can start off with geometry. We can do shapes, lights, and so on. Okay, we're actually not gonna get into anything other than our geometry. And we can also use a drop down in several one of these uh, buttons to choose other types of geometry. But in this case, we're just going to leave our standard primitives alone. Okay, as we can see, our obvious uh, options for standard primitives under geometry will be box, cone, sphere, and so on. Okay, and we're gonna see how these uh, kind of work. If you click on the word box, it allows us to use the um, box option. Uh, to create an object. There are some parameters that we can play around with. I'm not really going to get into them uh, right now. But basically, with any of these selected, you can click in the screen and start creating an object. 
In this case, I click, and uh, as long as I hold my mouse button down, it will kind of create a shape on the bottom of the, uh, the ground. And whenever I let go of the mouse, it will allow me to draw a height to that object. When I click again, I should now have myself a box. The parameters, the size, and so on will all be listed uh, right here. Okay, and the color of your box or whatever object you made, uh, it's just random. Uh, Max will do and create kind of random colors. In this case, it shows kind of a pinkish uh, purple for me. Now, once you're done creating an object, you do want to right click to get out of the tool. Okay, and uh, you'll see right there that it's not highlighted anymore. And now I can uh, do whatever I want to do to this box. Okay, now you'll also notice, however, that as soon as I right click and or select off the box and click back on it again, we'll notice that the parameters for our box have disappeared. Okay, now if you do want to change the parameters even after you've created it, don't worry about that. You can switch easily over to the Modify tab right here, and then our parameters will always be housed under the Modify tab, regardless of whether we've clicked off or gotten out of the tool. Okay, so as we can see here, we do have certain settings, and it obviously depends on which type of object we chose. In this case, it's a box, and we can see that we have a length, width, height, and then different uh, settings for our segments here okay and as we change these we move these sliders around or we can even type a number in say I type in a hundred and hit enter you'll see that it'll update to be a hundred now this uh, number is just a basic unit in max you can change the units uh, to be feet and uh, other things um, but we aren't worried about that for now we are just going to keep the basic max units Okay, now the segments, if we increase or decrease segments, as you can see here with length, will actually add cuts to our objects. We are going to talk about what these cuts and these things mean uh, just a little bit, um, uh, a couple minutes from now. Okay, so like you can see right here, we can play around with our settings, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a different object. I'm actually going to hit delete with our object selected, and it'll get rid of our box. I'm going to go back to the creation tab. Okay, and in this case, I'm actually going to choose cylinder. Cylinder is what we're going to actually start with uh, when we do our, ma our basic um, uh, trophy object in the next part of our lesson. But I will kind of draw out a cylinder here uh, as an example of showing you guys what subcomponent uh, objects are. So I'm going to draw out my cylinder here. I'm going to click. All right, and then I'm going to right click to get out of the tool. Okay, and then we can switch over to our modified tab so that we can see our settings. Now I'm just going to leave the settings default, whatever they were. Okay, and we do kind of see a bunch of boxes that make up this object. Uh, we do have 18 sides on our cylinder. Okay, and that kind of creates how many boxes are uh, kind of lined up here. So now we're going to talk about what those boxes or those objects are that basically create any 3D object uh, in Max. Now I will show you first what are some hotkeys to kind of change the view uh, that we have here. If we actually hit the F3 hotkey, we will change it from the shaded view, as we see up here, to a wireframe view, which we just kind of see the lines by themselves. Okay, if I click off of my object, you'll notice that we'll just see it as a shaded object. There are no lines on it. However, if we use the hotkey F4, you will always see lines, okay, or a wireframe on top of our shaded object. Right up here, it will show us that new updated view, which is shaded plus edged faces, okay, and that's the F4 hotkey. But for now, we're just going to leave the defaults, okay, which is shaded without wireframe. Okay, so when I go back and select my object, we'll see right here that it is named a cylinder. Okay, appropriately, of course, because that was the object that we created. However, we only have certain settings that we can change. There's not a lot of things that we can do with it. If we want to start really dramatically changing the shape, we need to convert this into what is known as an editable poly. Okay, and in order to do that, we want to right click over our object, bring up what is known as your quads in Max, and go all the way down to the bottom where it says convert to, and choose convert to editable poly. You'll notice that the name of the cylinder has been changed to editable poly and now it'll allow us to actually manipulate the object in uh, a bunch of different ways that we couldn't before uh, with just a basic cylinder. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what is a subcomponent object. Well, a subcomponent is basically anything or any basic element of a larger object or whatever creates our 3D model, those basic elements that create all of 3D. And as we can see here, we do have five basic elements that Max uses. 
Not every 3D program has five. Actually, at bare minimum, you'll have three. Max has two special ones, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Okay, but we can also hit the plus button up here where it says edit poly, and we can see vertex, edge, border, polygon, and element. Those are actually the exact same things as these five buttons down here, and you'll see they actually highlight automatically up here. Okay, or we can actually use the hotkeys one, two, three, four, and obviously five in order to choose our different subcomponents. Now, the very first subcomponent, as we see here, is a bunch of dots, okay? It's known as a vertex, okay? A bunch of um, ob or these selected at once are known as vertices, okay? And as you can see here, we can either select one vertice, okay? Or we can actually make a box selection and select a whole bunch of them. Okay, in this case, I'm going to select just one. We can zoom in on it or whatever. And as you can see, no matter how far I'm in, okay, I zoom in or I zoom out, the vertice will always remain the same size as far as the way it's represented on the screen. Okay, that little dot. It just basically represents one point in space. Okay, and that's what a vertex is in 3D. It's just one dot. Okay, now we can manipulate vertices by using our modified tools up here, such as the move tool the rotate tool and the scale tool. Okay, these you should be familiar with after using any of the game engines that have been taught previously uh, before this lesson. Now the hotkeys, by the way, to select these different tools are W, E, and R uh, in order to select our move, our rotate, and our scale. Now if I go back to say the move tool here, we can use this little gizmo or pivot point, okay, to move any of these vertices and kind of change or manipulate our object, okay, as you can kind of see here. Now, I'm just going to hit Control Z and undo that, okay? But we can also rotate and scale. However, if we only have one vertex select and we try to rotate it or scale it, we will actually notice nothing happens, okay? Remember, it is just one point in space. There's nothing we can do about rotating or scaling it. However, if we do select multiple vertices at once, we can then scale them, okay, as you can see here, in and out, or obviously rotate them too, just like we can move them. Okay, and that is very the very basic subcomponent, uh, which is the vertice or basically vertex one dot, okay, in space. Now the very next one is known as an edge. An edge basically connects two vertices, okay? So if we ever have a line in between two vertices, that is known as the edge, okay? And you can do the same thing with edges. We can move them, Okay, rotate them and scale them just like we could with our vertices. Uh, the next in the uh, max lineup is border. We're actually going to skip that. We're going to talk about that when we get into uh, actually modeling. Okay, the next one after that is a polygon. Okay, and polys or polygons, as you can see here, are any connection of enclosed edges. All right, and in this case, we actually have four different edges okay that close themselves to create this polygon this is known as a quad okay the smallest polygon you can have is a tri okay which basically means three-sided and there is basically no limit to the amount of sides a polygon can have however in most modeling we do try to tend to stay with tries and quads okay however even in this model we do have a polygon that has more than four sides which as we can see here this very top one this one's actually 18 sided because of the uh, size that the cylinder is by default when we first create our cylinder this actually creates a 18 sided polygon uh, on the top now one thing i do want to also show is how you change your selection mode when you do have a polygon selected, we can select more than one polygon, obviously, once again, by using the uh, marquee tool or box selection. We can also make multiple selections by holding down control and adding to our selection and so forth, or taking away by holding down alt. Okay, and that's how we can do that. But to change the way that looks when we have an object selected is actually the F2 hotkey. If you hit F2, you'll notice that we have it highlighted just red okay on the edges as opposed to the whole polygon uh, but if we hit f2 again it will give us a completely shaded polygon for our purposes the default with a fully shaded polygon will probably be the best and easiest to be able to tell what we have selected and so forth now the very last object under subcomponents here is known as an element okay and we can select element here okay and an element will actually select the entire object 
In particular cases, depending on your model, you might have more than one element and that will make it useful. Obviously, because we're only dealing with one object or one element, when we select it, it'll grab everything. So it doesn't seem to have much of a purpose because we can't actually grab the whole object as one and scale, rotate, and move the whole object as one without going into element mode. Okay, but element mode is another one of those subcomponents that are kind of unique to Max. Okay, generically through every single 3D program, you will always have vertices, edges, and polygons. Okay, but Max in particular uh, has these special border and element modes uh, that we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, um, but either way, that is your basic subcomponents. Okay, and your basic elements of what create a 3D object. And of course, your basic navigation tools to kind of move around in, uh, in Max. And that will conclude our introduction to the interface and subcomponents um, of a 3D element.